So in this sick video, we are going to be debunking no, I can't do this. This is not natural. So I'm going to be talking about the disadvantages of AMP. In fact, I've got Becky. Say hello, Becky. Hello, Becky. Who is in the background going to be asking me some questions that she's come across on the internet that basically says, AMP is terrible. Don't use it because of these reasons. And I'm going to see if I can debunk them. And if I can debunk them, then Hayden is going to do a little role now where he's going to put debunked on the screen. So let's uh, let's go for it. Becky, you ready with the first question? I am indeed, Simon. The first question we have from uh, the viewers on the internet says, mm -hmm. AMP <laughs> takes a lot of resources to keep a new site running smoothly. Well, okay. So uh, terminology on this one. So resources, I mean, the whole point of AMP is that it just reduces the number of resources, but I don't think that's what they're getting at. I think what they're trying to say is that if you have a website and you're having to run multiple versions of a front end, that this takes up resources as in human resources time um, to create that. And I kind of get that. I think AMP is quite new. And um, probably when this was written, I would imagine this is quite an old uh, thread. And there's some truths to it, but basically you want to go with a native AMP website. So when you're updating your website, I think we can create a just pure AMP website. You don't have to have two versions. That means that you have to manage two versions of the same website. That can cause you issues. Um, just go completely AMP, 100%. Don't have AMP versions of a page, have an AMP website. I think that, that saves so much time and resources. And I think as well with AMP, I mean, it's advancing quite quickly um, and these resources are becoming a lot easier. You just need to make sure that you have a good quality um, developer that understands the front end version of AMP and what, what changes need to be made. And AMP are working really hard, I think, to improve this with like they've recently introduced JavaScript, which is going to be another question, I reckon. Yes, don't get ahead of yourself. Yeah, it's always a question. It's always JavaScript, but uh, we've got... So do you think I've debunked that one? Yes, I kind of understand where it's come from, but I think that, um, uh, that yeah, if you have a native AMP website, that is not uh, an issue with resources. Debunked? I would say so. Debunked? Debunked! <laughs> <laughs> Cool, next one. Okay, next one. Apparently, you can't customize AMP pages. True or false? You cannot customize AMP web pages. Where was this found? Um, maybe, perhaps. It's a bit awkward on content management systems that focus on the HTML version and you have an AMP alternative of the page. Um, it's all about having a good developer to create the platform. I mean, we create native AMP websites. Um, and you can edit them just like you could any other website and makes really little difference whatsoever. Um, so you can edit and change AMP pages. Uh, some of these plugins, they're a bit confusing to some people. So the AMP version of the website looks completely nothing like the web. That's actually disadvantages to you. So if you look at an AMP page, it looks nothing like your actual website and there's fewer features. You're actually doing more harm than good. Um, yeah, just speak to a proper developer and yeah, they should be able to integrate it so you can edit it enough and it shouldn't hinder as long as you focus on creating good quality content rather than fancy animated graphics that actually people don't really want anyway. Um, so I, I, I personally think I've debunked that one. What do you think? I would agree, 100%. So, debunked! <laughs> I can't actually see this. Is it like... <laughs> Is Hayden doing a good job? <laughs> I think so. Cool. Yeah. Uh, I think moving on to um, the next one, this actually takes us quite nicely into the next one, which is that, um, seamless almost, um, AMP implementation is not straightforward. AMP implementation is not straightforward. If it's done incorrectly, then yes. Um, I think a lot of people with websites, uh, particularly smaller websites, small companies, uh, trying to implement AMP, it's it's a minefield for them. It's confusing. There are, I mean, I keep coming back to WordPress because this is kind of, you know, the uh, WordPress are in on AMP as well, I believe. Um, so they're kind of pushing this forward. There's an AMP um, application to or plugin uh, to generate, and and that can be a bit of a minefield, I think. But it keeps improving, and they've made some really good improvements recently. On this so I think that's caught people in the past but if you're getting a new website and you plan it correctly um, then then no no okay so I think the jury's out a little bit on this one very much dependent on how you do it yeah I don't know what's the question again <laughs> <laughs> Ampl implementation is not straightforward yeah doing it from the beginning is fine I think it's when you if when you've got a website 
and you're trying to create an AMP alternative and implement AMP onto an existing website, yeah, I get it, it can be difficult. Um, it's quite a new technology, but yeah, I do, I do, it, starting from the beginning or having a good plan, if you're a publishing website, then you're, you're gonna have a, a dedicated team to this, uh, surely, because it's uh, so important to have AMP on a publishing website. And if you're, if you're just a standard company with a brochure website, um, it, I'd roll it out with your next uh, website upgrade, plan it incorrectly, it's not a big deal whatsoever to implement it on a new website. Um, so yeah, I, I, I personally think it's debunked. I'm gonna go with that, but you know. Yeah, okay, happy to go with that. Yeah, we're gonna go debunked. Debunked! Are we not gonna debunk any? What's, what's, what is, this is a question for the comments, after you've hit the subscribe and the notification bell to get more videos like this, but you can put in the comments, what is the opposite of debunked? Not debunked. Yes, because we're unsure. We're unsure, yeah. Next, next question. Next question. So, AMP pages load from Google cache servers. So, you are very much dependent on Google and you cannot control your own server. Um, apparently, this is an issue. This is along the train of thought, I think, that Google are the devil. Um, and, yeah, I don't, I don't, everybody that talks about making your website search engine friendly is saying, Google um, and I think Google do far more questionable things in other areas than this. This I think is a genuine approach by Google to speed up the internet and provide you with a content distribution network that is super fast, seamless and works throughout the world. I think it's a thumbs up, I, I really do. Um, it's no different to Cloudflare I suppose. Some people might go, oh it's slightly different and us, yeah I can see that but Google's aim is to speed up the internet with um, AMP or AMP's aim and the people who are in uh, on the AMP project is to speed up the internet and this is one way of doing it and it's a great way of doing it. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna say if you're a Debbie Downer on Google, then maybe this isn't debunked for you and there's nothing we can really do to help you with that. Um, but if you're really serious about optimizing your website and providing a really super fast, seamless experience for your visitors, and this is completely debunked. It's up, debunked. <laughs> <laughs> okay, moving on. Next question. A um, little bit related to the last question, actually. So, slow loading video content is apparently a problem, but this is to do with the cache once again. So, perhaps we could go through how. Um, Okay, so I'm a bit unsure with this one without looking into it. It's a bit, um, uh, I can kind of, I haven't seen it myself, but I, uh, we actually did a website that was quite heavy on video content and really the, the performance was actually better. Um, the, I think where they may be coming with this is that when you load a page with content that the um, embed code for like YouTube or Vimeo will be lazy loaded, so it'll be a bit later. So it gives the appearance that it's a bit slower maybe. Um, but actually it's probably loading just as quick, if not quicker, and at least they've got the uh, rest of the content to look at. So you're pleasing the visitor that way while it loads the video. So I think it's, I think it's perspectives on that one. Unless I've misunderstood their point on this one. Um, and if you've got a question over video and you think that I'm missing something, just tell me in the comments and I'll have a look into it. But I've never looked at an AMP website and gone, boy, that video content's a bit slow. Not at all, I've gone, hey, that's fast. <laughs> Okay. So debunked or yeah debunked yeah, debunked, debunked yeah definitely. debunked. Right, next one. Ooh, this is a tricky one. Tracking problems and analytics. <sighs> you know what? I think this one's going to be one that we can't debunk fully. So you can use analytic tools. Um, but they are kind of restricted in what they can do. So your heat mapping kind of software, I think now with the introduction of uh, JavaScript enabled on AMP, I think this will become easier. We may see platforms introduce services to do heat mapping, but I think it's unlikely because it does slow down a website a lot. Um, so your kind of heat mapping or live recordings uh, of websites, yeah, I don't think we're ever gonna get past that. But what you can do is turn off AMP, um, I maybe on a split test or something to disable AMP and run your heat mapping software. Um, 
But yeah, I don't think it's a big issue on that one anyway, not having that because it does speed up the website and the performance. Um, but then you go into other tracking software. So uh, Google Analytics works absolutely fine. Uh, Google Tags works absolutely fine. Um, so you could maybe be clever and work with your developer to add tags on different interactive parts of your website uh, that show when things appear on the page, show scroll rates, uh, when they hit a button and, and, and interactivity like that. So maybe a li little bit more work. There aren't those sort of plug and play options that we, we have before, but there are alternatives. I'm kind of on the verge here because I'm like, I don't think it's ever, uh, it's not a big enough disadvantage to not go to AMP because of this. But I do understand the criticism of this. But I do think in the next uh, few years, there are going to be some uh, extraordinary solutions provided as people basically can't ignore um, the great work that AMP are doing to speed up the internet. So I don't think this is worth a debunk. We need to know what the non debunk is. Yes, we absolutely do. This is not debunked. Hayden can save his fingers from clicking over to debunked. Next question. Um, okay, so AMP pages are essentially a stripped down version of content. Oh. We don't like this one. No, we don't like this one because this is this is oh, this is like if you if you have a WordPress website and you install um, the AMP plugin. Um, or any website actually, we use Modex, the same thing. You can use the AMP plugin um, and straight out of the box, yeah, it's a stripped down version of your website and it looks terrible and you're like, oh, is this what AMP is? It's not very good. But again, talk to your developer and they can make, or they should make that AMP template look as close to your actual website as possible because um, that's how AMP works. It needs to have the same interactivity and visitor journey as your standard website um, or just have an um, AMP native website and then you only have to worry about AMP and then everything else is taken care of. Um, so yeah, no, I think that comes from people that just don't understand it enough. And there's so many tools in AMP. We've created some stunning websites that you wouldn't know are AMP. Um, they perform so much better. That is like, I think that is the most debunked one on here. Like, yeah. Debunk, debunk, debunk. Can we do like double debunk and then take it off and then put it back on and then take it off? And then yeah, we have. Uh, <laughs> that's debunked, hundred yeah, percent. It's just yeah. not even a thing. Don't it's not a thing. Don't, yeah. Not, not a thing. Okay. Um, let's talk about ads. So ad revenue being reduced. Oh, I, I, I don't feel like I've got the authority on this one to really answer it too much. I think the criticisms come from um, the fact that you can only run. Google ads on AMP websites. Um, oh, someone, someone in the ad marketing might be able to pick up on this. I, I think I think if your website is optimized and is reaching more people, it has more opportunities to get ad revenue. So I would say that AMP is good for this, particularly if you're a publishing organization, you're putting out news feeds with, yeah, you're getting more visitors. So that's going to help your ad revenue. In fact, I've had inquiries or we've had inquiries certainly from people saying that they've seen ad revenue go down because the AMP section of their website isn't working correctly, which would suggest that AMP was improving their ad revenue. So on that basis, it's debunked. Um, but I don't really have the authority to know this in full depth. And maybe I think this is probably an early question when AMP first came out. And I think this has probably been resolved because at the end of the day, Google need ad revenue as well. So they're going to do everything they can to improve it. I think everything's on your side to increase ad revenue through AMP. So if you, if you think that it's going to decrease, then you're not really working with it correctly. Or yeah, I don't think it's AMP is not the issue. So that, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to go with debunked. Okay, right Debunked. Go. let's do it. Right, we've got one more to cover. Whoa. Unless we can think of anything else in the meantime. I'm sure we're going to get loads of loads and loads and loads of comments when we're not because we're a new channel and we've only got nine subscribers, which reminds me, hit the subscribe button uh -huh. and the notification bell to the side so you get all the latest videos. More like this. We're going to be doing one about the um, advantages of um, AMP um, shortly, and we've got a whole series of what is. So, Becky, with your question. Okay, last one. Uh, JavaScript limitations um, and limitations also on widgets and features. We've covered this a little bit, I think. We have. Um, That's Becky's code for don't drag out on this. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, we've already covered this. We don't need to talk anymore. Oh. <laughs> yeah, let's, let's keep this one brief. <laughs> Briefly, AMP sorted this one out. They bought out AMP custom JavaScript um, uh, a week ago from today. So we're uh, in August 2019. Uh, AMP JavaScript custom 
JavaScript AMP was enabled and we're, we're, everybody's happy. To be fair, I haven't really used it that much because the past sort of year, year and a half that we've been using AMP, and we've focused on creating websites that don't rely or need JavaScript. And actually that really does benefit and speed up a website anyway. I would say don't use JavaScript if you don't need to. JavaScript's great, but it is way overused. You go on a lot of slow websites and you think, well, clearly it's slow because you're passing all of the rendering and processing information down to the client. And mobile phones are just struggling with it, particularly people with um, low quality mobile phones. Yeah, just do all the processing on the server end um, and then send it down. You may want to do some bits of JavaScript, but AMP have taken care of most of it. If you want to add your custom stuff on, you can now. Um, so that, that just like, no more JavaScript um, moaning people. Um, if you love JavaScript, you should be happy now. Um, and if you're not quite happy with it, you need to be a better JavaScript developer or front end developer, all controversial. <laughs> I can hear, I can hear the throbbing veins from people going, ah! <laughs> so, so quickly debunked. Okay. Cool. So that's that's everything. So if you've got an idea for a video on questions you need asking, then let us know. And we're just going to trawl the internet for all sorts of stuff like this and send put it all together in videos like this. Hopefully you found it useful. Click the subscribe and hit the notification bell for more videos. Thank you very much. See you in the next video.